Mr. Biden said he understood why European partners would find it harder to enact similar bans and that the US was working closely with European partners on a long-term strategy. Mainland Europe imports much more of Russia's oil and gas than the US and the UK. The ban comes after debate within the US administration and its Western allies about whether to go ahead with sanctioning Russian oil and gas for the invasion of Ukraine and the potential new shock to energy markets. Much of the impact of a US ban was priced in by the market over the weekend when the global benchmark nearly hit 140 US dollars a barrel. On Tuesday, oil prices surged anew. Near midday in New York, Brent crude was 6.6% higher to 131.30 US dollars a barrel. US oil was up 6.5% to 127.17 US dollars a barrel. The average price for a gallon of gasoline in the US hit a record 4.17 US dollars on Tuesday. UK to phase out imports. Britain will phase out oil imports from Russia, which makes up 8% of its total consumption, by the end of this year, Business Secretary Kwasa Kwarteng said. Mr Kwarteng said Britain also would look to cut off Russian gas, which makes up just 4% of supply. About 70% of Russian oil can no longer find buyers, even in Asia, largely because the financial sanctions make it too risky and complex to purchase, insure and take delivery of the Russian product. The US buys about 200,000 barrels a day of Russian crude, about 3% of total imports, and 500,000 BPD of other petroleum products. Russian coal accounts for about 5% of US imports, or roughly 280,000 tons of the 5 million tons imported. Total coal imports made up about 1% of US coal consumption in 2020. Many US companies have already been self-sanctioning purchases of Russian commodities over worries about insurance, logistics, trade credit, and potential sanctions. Shell Apologies pulls out of Russia. The largest American oil producer Exxon said last week it would no longer invest in new developments in Russia and that it was fully complying with all sanctions. Mr Biden's move came hours after European energy giant Shell said it would stop buying oil from Russia, the world's second largest crude oil producer. The company had earlier said only that it would pull out of its joint ventures with state-backed Gazprom and had drawn flak for continuing to snap up Russian output. Shell would now, in a phased manner, stop buying all Russian hydrocarbons, crude oil, petroleum products, gas and liquefied natural gas, and also shut its service stations and fueling operations in Russia. We are acutely aware that our decision last week to purchase a cargo of Russian crude oil to be refined into products like petrol and diesel, despite being made with security of supplies at the forefront of our thinking, was not the right one. And we are sorry, Shell CEO Ben Van Burden said in a statement. More oil poised to be released. Bank of America analysts have calculated that less than half of Russian exports could be replaced by a combination of incremental US shale, Iranian barrels, and from the organization of the petroleum exporting countries. They said if China took up more Russian oil, and the US and OPEC increased production, then oil prices could stabilize. In our baseline scenario, Russian commodity flows are fundamentally rerouted away from Europe and the US, but no major structural deficits emerge, leading to an average Brent crude oil price in 2022 of 110 US dollars a barrel the bank's analyst said. In its ugly scenario, restrictions on Russian commodity supplies lead to major structural deficits, with Brent at US$130 per barrel. In its good scenario, the conflict is resolved in short order and commodity flows roughly revert to six months ago, with Brent at US$95 a barrel. International Energy Agency head Fodor Byrol said members of his organization were on standby to release more oil from their emergency stockpiles to rein in the soaring price. We are ready to release as much oil as is needed, Mr. Byrol told the Financial Times. We are monitoring the markets, and we are ready to release more oil from stocks. Mr. Byrol said he had hoped that Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, 
and some other Middle East producers, with spare capacity would be boosting output by now, but their response had been disappointing. Morning Consult's geopolitical expert Jason McMahon said the focus for energy markets was how Europe would respond to the US sanctions. Biden's decision to ban US imports of Russian oil is noteworthy, but movement toward a European ban on imports of Russian oil and gas would be the real showstopper, given Europe's relatively high dependence on energy supplies from Russia, Mr. McMahon said. Such a move, if it materializes, would have major economic and geopolitical ramifications. The EU on Tuesday announced its plan to tackle its dependence on Russian oil and gas. The plan calls for a dash towards renewable energy, greater energy efficiency, and urgent action to replenish the continent's dwindling gas reserves. Brussels suggested the bloc would have to diversify gas supplies, both through pipelines to other suppliers and more imports of LNG, as well as imports of biomethane and green hydrogen. To deal with the political fallout of spiraling energy prices, Brussels suggested European countries should divert higher revenues from the energy sector into helping businesses and consumers deal with higher costs.